Dinosaur Adventureland in Lenox, Alabama. It is beautiful out there today, wasn't it? Love it, love it. Come on down. we got lots to do. Man, what a busy day. Today is April the 4th, 2024. We're going to be doing comments on comments and questions and answers. Get your questions ready. We believe the Bible is true and evolution is the dumbest religion in the world. Never been a dumber idea than to believe you're related to a potato and you came from a dot of nothing exploding. Stop and think about it. We're an old-fashioned, independent, temperamental, fundamental, right-wing, radical, chicken-eating Baptist church. I've been a Baptist preacher 50 years coming up this May. I, somebody sent me the coolest, I get the coolest stuff sent to me all the time. Okay, this guy said, there are two things God left out of the Bible, my opinion and yours. <laughs> I like that. Okay. Today, April the 4th. Uh, tomorrow, we'll be getting more into the redoing my seminar series. It's going to take us 300 years, so don't get excited. The seminar series, 18 hours, uh, 50 bucks for the whole thing. And we, we spent the last, what, 12 weeks on just part one, the age of the earth, how to show the earth is not billions of years old. We'll put that together. Probably going to be three DVDs when we're done. Then starting tomorrow, Lord willing, we'll do the Garden of Eden. Why did they live to be 900 years old? The Bible says in Genesis 5, the people lived to be 900, and they did. Why? Well, we'll cover that starting tomorrow night. Okay, so then the eighth anniversary of uh, getting the property given to us is uh, coming up in a couple weeks. And let's see, April the 8th is the big day when the uh, eclipse takes place, right? Seven years ago, it went across seven cities named Nineveh. And now this time it's going across seven cities named... Uh, uh, Salem, no, something. Or Nineveh, seven years ago, went across seven cities named Salem. Okay. And they're going to cross right at the, the city in southern Illinois or something called Rapture. Carbondale. What is it? Carbondale. Carbondale. I, yeah, okay. Anyway, who cares? Okay, we'll see. Okay. Gail Ripplinger, a longtime friend of mine, has written many, many books on the King James Bible, Understanding the King James, Understanding in Awe of Thy Word. Excellent, excellent book. We sell that one. Uh, and uh, the King James, the Blind Guides version, uh, excellent book. What do you got up there? New Age Bible versions. That's a classic that she wrote. Anyway, Gail is, uh, I won't tell you how old she is. She's uh, six years older than me, and I'm 71. But uh, this, we sell this book, New Age Bible versions, if you want to study all the different uh, Bible versions, the language, why did they use the these and the thous, all kinds of stuff on that. It's really a major study you should get into and find out which Bible. Hazardous Materials. Excellent book she wrote. She is very sick. Okay, she's had some, uh, doc, doctor visit uh, recently, and they said you got to might have to have some surgery. So also, let's all pray right now that God will touch her. Let's pray for Gail. Heavenly Father, what a warrior she's been all these years. Father, would you please do something mighty in her in her body and her health? Draw her uh, closer to you, Lord, and use all this for your glory. I pray that she'll just play and heal her, Father. You designed everything. You can do it. Just, just do it, Father. We ask that we our our prayer is that you will just heal her and bring her health back. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, thank you, folks. If you want to support our ministry, we used to open for free for eight years now. Uh, 777 Club is where people, if they can, give a dollar a day, 31 bucks a month to help us win souls and keep open for free. Call my wife, Sandra, back there, 855 Big Dino, extension one. If you've got any questions about that, or go to secretary at drdino.com. If you want to make a donation toward building our little Noah's Ark, we want to build, it's going to cost about fifteen or $20,000. Call Sandra. Say, I want to help put my name on there. If you give 500 bucks, we'll put your name on Noah's Ark. Uh, we're going to build it, but we need the money to build the stuff, okay? So uh, drdiner.com is our website. We're open almost eight years, coming up in, what, a week and a half. And we do this because people who love the Lord support us. Our channel, Dr. Genesis Baptist Church, is one of our channels. Okay, I got a strange letter from uh, Catherine, and this is what she said. Uh, late summer, 99. Point Defiance Park Viewpoint in Tacoma, Washington. Catherine and her husband, Rick, saw a large male pterodactyl flew right coast, mid-island mid on uh, something uh, to Point Defiance, landed 37 feet from us, came within 13 feet. We heard it land in the brush next to us. Afterwards, we got in the car and left the park. And she described it as a 35-foot wingspan. Okay, we got Catherine on the phone here. Catherine, come on in, tell us what you saw and tell us about this sighting. This was, this was great. Well, we were um, we were going to the zoo, and there's a viewpoint out there on Point Defiance Park. And my husband and I got out of the car, and we stepped over the guardrail and went right up to the bank, and we saw something flying from, as you're looking at Vashon Island, and I believe you guys have a map, if you could put the map up, okay. I can talk about um, its... Yeah. There you go. Okay. So that point, 
heart right out there is Point Defiance. All right. And Vashon is the island right uh, across from it. I saw something, I didn't know what it was yet, come from the middle of the right side of Vashon Island all the way over and it landed right about 37, 38 feet to our left on the same bank and we heard it land. And okay. at first we didn't know what it was. And the only thing that I know that's large uh, that flies in the sky is an eagle. I've never seen anything bigger than that flying in the sky. And so I said, look, honey, there's an eagle. And it was so far away. And my husband was accustomed to looking at things over the ocean. And he said, that's not an eagle. And as we watched it, it as it came closer, um, I saw a bony crest sticking out the back of its head. I saw, uh, you know, a lot of characteristics, a big, huge pointed beak and all kinds of characteristics. I think I've enumerated there, but I can okay. I can go into more detail. But as it got closer, uh, that's that's what it looked like. I didn't draw that picture, but that's exactly what it looked like. And this was in 1999 before the age of cell phones and the ability to take pictures. But I asked my husband, I said, what is that? And he said, I don't know. And I said, it's a pterodactyl. And he said, it can't be. Those have been extinct for millions of years. <laughs> and I said, but we're looking at one. <laughs> and he said, he didn't say anything else after that, except for when the thing landed, he said, get the boys in the car. <laughs> so we weren't very far away from it. And I think at one point we were about 13 feet away from it. And I definitely could tell that it was not an eagle when we got close, it got closer. It was definitely, um, what I've come to find out was not a pterodactyl. It's a, it was a large male pteranodon. And okay. I guess there is a lot of confusion between, um, pterodactyls and pteranodons. Uh-huh. People just say whenever they see anything flying, you know, uh, um, that it's a pterodactyl. And that's not true. It's okay. pteranodon. Pterodactyls don't have, um, t they have teeth and they have uh, similar sizes in males and females. And pteranodons are much larger. This thing had a wingspan of about 35 feet. Well, Catherine, you are about the 15th or 20th person to tell me a story like this, that they have seen Good. these things. Yeah. Now, <laughs> from a long a biblical, time ago or recently? Oh, in the, oh, in the last 35 years since I've been doing teaching on creation, and I've always said dinosaurs always lived with man. Noah took them on the ark. People killed most of them in the last 4,000 years. They called them dragons or some other name. If you could, if you could kill one, you'd be a hero. You know, Prince George, St. John, all kinds of people supposedly slew a dragon. And I said, there probably are some still alive. I've been saying that on video number three about dinosaurs in the Bible for 35 years now. There probably are some dinosaurs still alive. Now, to an evolutionist, what you just said sounds absolutely crazy. It's impossible. But let me, let me pr make a prediction here. If you capture a pterodactyl and put it in the Brooklyn Zoo, they will put a sign under there that says, this one survived for 70 million years. <laughs> they, will not, they will not consider giving up their stupid religion of evolution. If you caught one and put it in the zoo, it wouldn't faze them. But I think you are right. Thank you so much. There probably are some still around. Uh, I'm not saying they're everywhere, and you got to be careful when you go downtown. That's not what I said. But there probably are some still alive. In the Congo swamp in Africa, there have been many reports of a, a patasaurus or brachiosaurus still alive. Loch Ness Monster. Everybody says it, says it, sees it, says it's a plesiosaur. 11,000 people claim they've seen it. So anyway, Catherine, thank you so much. Come visit our dinosaur adventure land, why don't you? Okay. We'd love to have you. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you. Thank you. All right, folks. There you go. Believe what you want. All right. Let's see. Last night, I did a debate with Keith. Uh, you misspelled debates. You know that, right? I probably shouldn't point that out for everybody, should I? Okay. <laughs> Disregard that, okay? Let's see. Here's some of the comments on that. Go Kent. He didn't debate Dr. Hoven. He just sneered and condescended. He keeps interrupting Kent. Let's see. Kent absolutely destroyed this guy. Kent swatting another mosquito. 
Let's see, maybe he should have addressed the issues instead of waving his arms around. Uh, uh, how can he claim to have taught high school level math and not understand the rate of recession would change? Now look, I agree, Raymond. The rate of recession would change. There's no possible way to know all the details because the rate that the moon is leaving us depends upon the tides on the Earth. And if the Earth was at different ocean depths, all kinds of things could have influenced the rate. You're right. But it certainly is not a problem for a 6,000-year-old Earth. Either way, it may be a real serious problem for the millions of years, billions of years. Okay? That's what I showed last night. Anyway, so here's how many have ever heard of the expression called overkill? There was a story one time, I think the Russians uh, shot a missile into an American base someplace in Turkey or something, and the Americans radioed Russian embassy and said, what's, what's going on here? What are you doing? They said, we, don't have, we have no Russians in that area. They said, understood. So they sent in all the planes and everything else, destroyed everything within a, a square mile. I mean, nothing. Not a worm lived, you know. Then they texted the radio uh, embassy again and said, you're correct. There are no Russians in the area. <laughs> Get the message across. Overkill. Uh, well, somebody said, sometimes, called the Grand Canyon of North Carolina, or the Grand Canyon of the Southeast, the Linville Gorge is easily one of the most dramatic landmarks in the Appalachian Mountains. So, the Israelis, October 7th, 2023, 1,139 Israeli citizens and, nation and foreign nationals, and uh, 764 citizens, were killed, and 248 people taken hostage. For, for what? The Hamas came in, killed a bunch of people. Did Israel, what did Israel do about it? Well, let's see. Since this war started, there have been 1,139 1 1 Israelis killed, and Palestinians, there have been 32,000 of them killed. What do you expect them to do? Come in there, and people are having a party, and you walk in there and murder a bunch of their people? Yeah. That's, uh, Somali pirates came to attack a ship one time, a British Special Forces uh, explained it to them in a language everybody understands. They're all down at the bottom of the ocean now. So. Uh, Keith said last night, I don't know how long it took to form Grand Canyon, he's talking about, but there are ways to deduce it is much older than 6,000 years. Really, Keith, I'm sorry, I think you're mistaken on that. Let me go back to, uh, let's see, that's, uh, get to my Grand Canyon part here, okay? If I got it here, Grand Canyon. Let me explain it to you, Keith, and everybody else that followed last night. Talk about the Grand Canyon in Arizona. I've been there, top, bottom, flew down in a helicopter, all this kind of stuff. Love studying Grand Canyon. There's a little bitty creek at the bottom called the Colorado River inside that monster canyon. Okay? There's Grand Canyon. Side view of it. Little bitty river down at the bottom. The textbooks always say over millions of years, the Colorado River carved the Grand Canyon from solid rock. Really? I think obviously that solid rock used to once be soft mud layers. What if it carved it while they were all soft mud? What if Noah's flood made all those mud layers in one year just by tidal pumping? And what if the canyon was carved out in a few weeks after, shortly after the flood, well, before the mud dried out? Hmm, okay. It's a fact Grand Canyon exists. Evolutionists say it formed slowly over millions of years, lots of time. Creationists say, oh, it formed quickly with lots, lots of water and a little bit of time. And the guys who believe in evolution are always trying to erase that line between the fact and their interpretation of the fact. No, it's a fact the canyon exists. It is not a fact it took millions of years. But the textbooks say, Colorado River cut through layer upon layer of rock over millions of years. Okay, is this a fact, or is that an interpretation of the evidence that we're seeing? Could there be another way to look at it? Let's see, anybody want to guess what happened here? Looks like uh, the dam broke. Water went over the top, carved a little gash out. Did it wash away the whole dam? No, just cut a notch. Grand Canyon is a washed out dam like that, only Grand Canyon is bigger, okay? Let's see, you don't look back through hundreds of millions of years, you look down in a hole in the ground. I checked my watch, the date, when I was at the top of Grand Canyon, got in the helicopter, flew to the bottom, looked at my watch, it was the same day. I didn't go back in time at all. I couldn't believe it. I, what happened here? You don't go back in time, you look down in a hole in the dirt, what you do. It's the same date, top and bottom. If you plugged up Grand Canyon today, that would take a lot of dirt, I know, but a great big lake would back up behind it. Grand Canyon's a washed out dam. Some of the water from Wyoming drains through Grand Canyon. There's a whole lot of water comes through that hole, okay? Uh, there's the Grand Canyon right there. So Grand Canyon, there it is, Arizona. It's part of the Kaibab Plateau. The Kaibab Plateau is a great big ridge across Arizona. That's a, a rink, like a wrinkle in your a carpeting or something. Grand Canyon cuts right across it. It's a dam. It's a washed out dam. 
There's Grand Canyon, beautiful place. The snow line here tells the story. Between these two lines, the elevation is between seven and 8,000 feet above sea level. The river enters the canyon at less than 3,000 feet. Then it flows downhill 277 miles, comes out the other side at 1,800 foot elevation. So over 277 miles, the river loses 1,000 feet of elevation. All rivers flow downhill, Keith, all of them that I've ever seen, okay? Ground, the top of Grand Canyon is about seven or 8,000 feet. It enters the canyon at less than 3,000. Rivers don't flow uphill. Grand Canyon's a washed out dam. Um, the top of the canyon's higher than the bottom. I'm gonna go slow so you can get this now, okay? The river only runs through the bottom. The top is higher than where the river enters the canyon by 4,000 feet. Hmm, rivers don't flow uphill. The top is higher than the bottom. Look at that right there. Look, there's the river down there. Wow, okay. So, Grand Can there's no, there, the rivers don't flow uphill. There's no delta. Where's all the mud that washed out? Grand Canyon's a washed out dam. Probably going through so fast it washed it out, who knows, into the Pacific Ocean or Gulf of Aqaba or wherever it comes out down there. I don't know the Gulf of, uh, uh, what's the Gulf down there? California, Mexico, who cares? Okay, washed it out. There's a great book of the, in the beginning by Walt Brown, if you want to get the go down deep, stay down long kind of stuff. Is this a book available? Nobody can find it, can they? You found it on Amazon? Okay. So it is available, but I think Walt Brown's got to be 88 years old by now, if he's still alive, I don't know. Anyway, in the middle of, in the middle of what would have been Grand Lake, okay? There's Grand Lake. If you closed, if you plugged up Grand Canyon, those lakes would form again today, okay? You can still see the beach line if you walk back over in Colorado, where the lake used to be. In, in the middle of Grand Lake, where it would be Grand Lake, it's gone now, right in there, there's a place called Monument Valley. And Keith asked last night in the debate, well, how do you get these things standing up in the middle? Wouldn't it wash everything away? Well, it didn't in Grand Canyon. Huh. When the water rushes away, if there's any spots that the dirt is denser or big rock sitting on top, like they called a mesa, which Spanish word for table, it would leave that behind. It started eating at the other side, eroded its way backwards. Grand Canyon's a washed out dam. I wanna to get to something else here tonight. Teton Dam failed in 1976, washed a gash out of the dam. Dams wash out all the time. Ours broke before we got the property here, okay? There we go, there's Lenox, Alabama. Uh, there we go. Oh, if you head toward Monroeville, go past Repton a couple miles, turn left on that Highway 136 to go to uh, uh, XL, right there where that star is. This guy built a dam for his lake, built a dam to build a little lake, and it was, oh, this is down in Bruton. This washed out in Bruton, Alabama. I got the other one. Here's the one over uh, by XL, Alabama. There it is, right there. Huh, poor guy. Did it wash away the whole dam? No, it cut a notch and drained the water out. Dams wash out all the time. The Tom Sauk Reservoir failed, 2005. It was a huge dam. There's a guy standing at the bottom there next to it, that little bitty guy, the yellow shirt on. Hmm. Most people start off building their marriage strong to last a long time too, and a little bit of crack can develop into a disaster. Well, Tom Sauk Reservoir failed. It got too full, went over the top, started eroding the other side, ate its way backwards, washed out a whole section. Little bitty nick point, started a nick. Uh -huh. And there it washed out a section. The water went roaring down the hillside, brought with it sand and gravel, and became liquid sandpaper and carved through solid concrete. Dams wash out all the time. It doesn't take millions of years, it takes millions of gallons. You guys just don't get it. Grand Canyon's a washed out spillway from a huge post-flood lake. I'm gonna guess, take a wild guess, it took 50 years after Noah's flood to, for the lake to get too full. And on the back side of the dam, you can tell it was a lake draining. As the water's going over, cutting a notch through the dam, as the water's going through, the water's gonna run backwards as the lake drains hit the main channel, turn around and come back out the other side and make what's called barbed canyons. Normally, rivers come together at less than 90 degree angles. Two rivers join up and keep going the generally same direction. That's kind of normal. On the Grand Canyon on the north side, it's backwards. Barbed canyons, they're called, indicating a lake was draining. Water runs down into the channel, turns around, comes back out. Huh, barbed canyons. Huh. Can the rocks tell a story? Yep, yeah, Grand Canyon probably formed in few weeks, not millions of years. One of the lies we cover in the textbooks. Uh, let's see, okay, stones, no. Let me get back to where I wanna be here. Comments on comments. 
slide number. There it is, 38. Alt DV, 38. There. He said, uh, I said, there are canyons everywhere. Keith said, I live in North Carolina. We have none. I said, I'll send you one. I Googled, Keith, now look, look, maybe you don't get out much, okay, but here's a map of your state, North Carolina, okay? On the far west edge of your state, you have what are called mountains, okay? Part of the Appalachian mountain chain, okay? The best North Carolina mountains. Wow, look at that. In between all those mountains, looks like some kind of canyon. There's Allison Ridge, which has a big canyon and a nice waterfall. There's Siler's Bald in North Carolina. There's a great big valley, and little or no river at the bottom. Huh. Look at that. Big mountains everywhere. Beautiful. Flat rock reaches 4,100 feet. Wow. Look at that. Great big, huge, wide canyon, little bitty river at the bottom. Hmm. You can go to Graybeard Mountain uh, if you want to go see that one. Uh, sh short, short off mountain in Linville. Okay. Big canyon there. Mm -hmm. Ten can Grand Canyons of the South. Let's see. Linville Gorge in North Carolina. Great big canyon. Almost nothing as far as river at the bottom. Okay. You can go to uh, Asheville, Linville Gorge. There it is. You don't have canyons in North Carolina? Keith, get out. Get, get out of the office. Go, go take a walk, okay? Let's see. Linville Gorge, one of the East, East American, Eastern America's most scenic and rugged gorges, created by the scouring action of the Linville River. Sometimes it's referred to as the Grand Canyon of Southeast USA. <sighs> the steep walls of the gorge uh, run for 12 miles. Elevation from 4,000 feet atop Hawksbill Mountain to 2,000 at the river of the valley floor. 12,000 acre Linville George Wilder Gorge Wilderness. Ah, oh, okay. Pisgah National Forest. There's Linville Falls. You don't have canyons in North Carolina? Hawksbill Mountain, we've got a canyon down there. There it is, okay. Down at the bottom is a little tiny river. Hmm. You think that little river made that canyon? Or maybe it all kind of washed out that while the Rocks were still soft mud. How about Table Rock Mountain? How about Providence Canyon in Georgia? Huge canyon. How about Tallulah George, Gorge Canyon in Georgia? Let's see, how about Cap Rock Canyons in State Park, Texas? Okay, here we go, Virginia, Kentucky's got a bunch of canyons. Canyons all over the world, that's what I told him, there's canyons all over. He said, why wasn't all of it washed out? Why did they leave those pillars? He said that at a minute, and one hour and two minutes and 15 seconds or something like that. Well, a lot of times canyons form and leave pillars standing behind. You need to do a little study of your geology there, okay? It happens all the time. Copper Canyon in Mexico. Ooh, that's a big one. Let's see. Europe's Eastern Grand Canyon. Uh, where is this at? In France. Oh, they got a Grand Canyon too. Zambia has one. Wow. Or Zimbabwe. Zimbabwe has a canyon. Who'd have thunk it? Okay. Havasaw Canyon. Oh, that's the United States. Never mind. Austria's got a canyon. Ooh, how do you pronounce that name? Uh, whatever it is, Austria, okay? There we go. Fish River Canyon in Namibia's got one. Wow, it looks like a Grand Canyon. Loops around and everything. Uh, Ordovai, Ordovai Gorge in Tanzania, they got one. Peru's got one. One of the deepest canyons in the world. It's uh, three to 4,000 meters. It's like that times 3. Point, what, 3.3, I guess, to get the, uh, change it into feet. So about 15,000 feet. That's a big canyon, okay? How about Colca Canyon in Peru? That is quite the canyon. Man, one of the deepest canyons in South America. They got them. Colca Canyon, two days to trek. Look, a little tiny river down at the bottom. Did that little river make that? I don't think so, okay. Uh, there it is. How about the Blyde River Canyon in South Africa? They got a canyon. I just typed in, what are major canyons in the world? Let's see, South Africa's got a bunch of them. All Egypt's got a couple of them. Ethiopia, Madagascar. Oh, Morocco, all these countries have canyons. Argentina has a bunch. Brazil has a bunch. There are canyons all over the world, okay? That's what I said. There's canyons all over the world. Now, one of them has to be the biggest. The Grand Canyon is not the biggest. It's probably the best known, at least to us. I don't know too much about the canyons in Namibia. Never been there, but they got them, okay? Let's see, Chile has them. Colombia has them. Mexico, oh, they got a whole bunch in Mexico. Look at this. Kentucky, Utah, Alabama, Cane Creek Canyon, all these just about every state has them. Got maybe Kansas, it's pretty flat. China has a whole bunch of canyons. Let's see, Nepal, India, Philippines, Jordan, Kazakhstan. They're all over the place. Just Norway. Wow, Vorden Store to Tilly Dog. Oof, I hit fella. Okay, Austria's got them. Australia's got them. Wales, New Zealand. 
Who'd have thunk it? You know, there's even canyons under the ocean, at the bottom of the ocean floor, submarine canyons. Atlantic Ocean has a bunch, the Indian Ocean has a bunch, the Pacific Ocean, the Black Sea. I'm sorry, I think you're seriously wrong about this, okay? The Bible warned us, though, there would be scoffers in the last days that would walk after their own lust, and they would say, where is the promise of his coming? Since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of the creation. For this they willingly are ignorant of. Hmm. Peter warned us there would be scoffers who scoff at the Bible who are willingly ignorant of three things. Number one, that by the word of God, the heavens, plural, were of old, and the earth standing out of the water and in the water. We cover all that on video number two, which gets into why did they live to be 900 years old? Mm -hmm. Might want to watch the seminar part two. Second thing they're ignorant of is the world was overflowed with water. It was, it's called the flood. They're ignorant of the flood. And thirdly, how the world today is reserved unto fire against the day of judgment. Keith, Peter was warning us about people like you who are ignorant of the creation, the flood, and the coming judgment of God. Now, Psalm 104 says, God laid the foundations of the earth that it should not be removed forever. Thou coverest it with the deep. That would be, he flooded it, okay? As with a garment, the waters stood above the mountains. That's pretty clear. Mm -hmm. At thy rebuke they fled. At the voice of thy thunder they hasted away. The water ran away. Wait, wait, to where and why? Well, so, verse 8, written in Old English, is a little difficult for us to understand 400 years later. It says, they go up by the mountains, they meaning the water. They go down by the valleys. Most other Bible versions have, have moved it to modern English. Here's what they say. The mountains rose, the valleys sank. The mountains rose, the valleys sank. The mountains rose, the valleys sank. I think that's what King James is saying here. The mountains rose, the valley sank, the water would run off. That's common sense. The earth is busted up into plates. Nobody argues about that. Cracks all over the place. There's called San Andreas Fault, the Hayward Fault, the New Madrid Fault. None of them are my fault, but earth has a lot of faults, okay? And those cracks of the earth are still moving. The plates, as big as, big as uh, Texas, floating around, moving around. And the edges are called the fault lines. Some of the places at the end of the flood lifted up. Other places went down. That might be why nearly all the mountain ranges follow the coastlines. Is that interesting or what? The Rocky Mountains follow the North Pacific. Oh, what happened here? The Ap Alp uh, Appalachians, where you live, follow the North Atlantic. The, the Andes Mountains follow the South Pacific. So many mountain ranges seem to follow the coastline as if maybe they're made at the same time. You see, if the Earth is covered in water, and one place lifts up a little bit, the water is going to go down here. This is going to become mountains. That's going to become ocean. It's not complicated. Okay. So anyway, uh, one place lifts up, another place goes down, the water rushes off. As the mountains rose, the water ran off to the sea and caused enormous erosion because the so sediments were still soft. Noah's flood. The earth was covered with water. One section lifted up. As another one sank down, the water would rush off to fill in the basin. That's why we have oceanic crust is thinner than continental crust. I mean, the difference is minuscule compared to the size of the earth. If the crust of the earth was about 30 miles thick under the continents and three to five miles under the oceans. It's interesting. So I think all these cracks that we see are left over from where the fountains of the deep broke open. The Bible said there would be scoffers who would be willingly ignorant of the flood. The mountains rose, the water rushed into the low places, but the oceans were smaller right after the flood. When Noah got off the ark, you could walk anywhere in the world. They were all connected because the ice caps were huge. I cover all this on my seminar. The giant ice caps would trap a lot of fresh water. It's going to take 400 years for that to melt. As it does, it's going to raise the ocean level, which is why we have a continental shelf. That probably used to be the beach way out there. I know you Brits aren't going to like this at all, but you used to be part of France. Uh -huh. Good thing the ice melted. Yeah, got you away from them French. I understand, okay. Uh, the shallow water can be seen even from space. All around Ireland, uh, North Ireland, Scotland, Wales, it's all used to be part of France, England. Between Russia and Alaska, the land bridge would be thousands of miles wide if you lowered the oceans a couple hundred feet. So anyway, we cover all that on video number uh, two and video number six of my series. More about that. I think uh, you're just simply wrong. Okay? Yes, there are canyons all over, and all that came from the water running off at the end of the flood. So I stand my ground. The Bible is right, and evolution is stupid. Hmm?
OK, more questions and comments, brother? Let's see. Lots of pterodactyl have been seen in North Carolina. Hmm. Somebody get a picture. I want to see that, OK? I have a video. I saw a video of a pterodactyl flying in front of a, I think it was a semi driver caught the picture of it. Yeah, we should put all those together on one video. Living dinosaurs. Well, thank you. Send that to Joseph. Tech support, T E C H, tech support at drdino.com. Thank you. We'll you be watching the eclipse. What time of day does it happen? I'm probably going to go to sleep. Oh, it's in the daytime, so I know, but uh, yeah. Uh, I, I, I don't think anything's going to happen, except a lot of people are going to get excited. A whole bunch of people are going to drive all the way up there and burn a lot of gas, and the town's going to, they're going to sell a lot of McDonald's that week. And then I think we're going to go back home. Okay? We'll see. I don't know. Hundreds of canyons around the world, some much longer than Grand Canyon. A recent discovery was found a large, larger canyon than the Grand under the ice sheet in Antarctic. Yeah, I've, I've heard about that. I should have added that here. Thank you, George. Appreciate that. Is it best to visit DL during the week or weekend or even matter? Well, theoretically, we're closed Sunday, Monday. In actuality, people, somebody comes, people come all the time. Okay? So try to let it give us a break once in a while, all right? If you can come anytime except Sunday or Monday, but if you want to come, we'll still, we'll still take care of you. What is Neil deGrasse Tyson coming to debate? I'd love to see him. Tie him in knots. I would be thrilled. I tell you what, all of you, contact him. Say, Neil, Kent Hovind has challenged you to a debate. There is no, I, I take the position, there is no evidence for evolution. These charts that they make showing everything related, yes, boys and girls, the, so let's see, the sunflower is related to the frog. Kent Hovind said that is stupid, that is not science, that's a religious belief, and I will debate anybody on that topic, anybody. Okay, go ahead. Leaving dinosaurs. Oh, he means living. Okay. The dinosaurs would be like reptiles, like iguanas. They actually sometimes look like dinosaurs. Uh, we have a three-horned chameleon in our, well, he was in our science center. He died, so we put him in a jar. Uh, but we've got, I, I believe, reptiles never stop growing. Now, some of the bigger dinosaur species might, might have gone completely extinct because in the new climate after the flood, you notice if you get look at Genesis 5, the people lived to be 900. After the flood, they only lived to be 400 and then 200. So I'm not saying all lizards today would grow into dinosaurs. So, But some of the dinosaurs that they had before the flood, and the flood is what made them into fossils, uh, they would have not been able to reach maturity, maybe after the flood in the New World, so they simply died off from climate change or from man's hunting. But yes, reptiles never stop growing, called indeterminate growth. Let's see. Why do you think the Earth is 6,000 years old? Seem to think much probably. It, I think it seems most probably that that's what the evidence for it. What's the evidence for it? You need to watch my video number one. I cover that for two hours. The Bible clearly teaches about 6,000. Just simply add up the dates. You get Genesis 5, Adam was 130 when his son was born. That boy was 105 when his son was born. Look at, read up the dates. After the flood of Noah, you go to Genesis 11, and it gives a bunch more dates. And it takes it down to Joseph, and we know Joseph was one of the vice pharaohs of Egypt. And so you put two and two together, you find out about 6,000 years. Now, the Bible says clearly that nothing died before man sinned. Man brought death into the world. Exact opposite of evolution, where death brought man into the world. Total opposite. Okay? Bible says God made everything perfect. Man wrecked it. Well, technically, the woman did, but that's okay. And so, <laughs> and it, it, God made a perfect world. And if, if evolution is true, oh, it started off as chaos, hot ball of rock, and it slowly is getting better and bigger, and we're going we're gonna to be God one day. This is dumb. It's total different religion, evolution is. Seriously wrong. Okay, other questions? Let's see, nothing will happen during the eclipse, but it's a signifying something for those who've been paying attention to signs and time. I have people send me stuff, a lot of stuff on this. You may be right, I don't know. If I knew that the eclipse was a major sign and telling us the world's gonna end in seven more years, I'd still keep doing what I'm doing. I'm busy serving God, winning souls. What are you doing? Chasing Zelda? I gotta get a new name. Who else did they chase around in the video games? Mario, okay. <laughs> yeah. Let's see. What do you think about churches that play guitars and stuff? I, in the Bible, they use all kinds of instruments, uh, stringed instruments. I'm not against that. Uh, I pre don't prefer the uh, 
rocky type music. I like, you know, gospel hymns, old fashioned kind of stuff. But, uh, and I tell people here, I don't care what music you listen to. Just, I, don't make me listen to it. Put your headphones on. Right? Okay. Another good point that evolution is wrong. If we came from monkeys, why do monkeys have better memory than human? What are we talking about? Oh, memory. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> I didn't know that they did, but that sounds good. Is there some evidence for that? Send me stuff on that. That'd be interesting, okay? All right, let's see. Keith tried to argue the rate of moon move from Earth was slower due, due to gravity being stronger. Well, I don't think he said that. Well, gravity is the same strength, but if you're closer, it has more effect on you, the inverse square law, okay? I would assume the scientists have studied that. Include, that's why they came to the 1.4 billion. But see, there are so many factors involved in the, 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 the moon is leaving us because the energy is being transferred. As we slow down from the, the tides going up and down, pushing against the continents, slowing the earth down, okay, called tidal friction. Well, that has an effect, so the energy is transferred, the conservation of angular momentum is, is transferred to the moon is slowly moving away because the earth slows down. They kind of both cause each other. You know, the moon causes the tides, the tides cause the moon to move further away. It's a complex, it's not simple mathematics. I think that's why nobody's ever really saw, you, you couldn't, you'd have to know how deep was the ocean, you know, 4,000 years ago. If you take into account Noah's flood when it's totally covered, that would totally change things as far as the rate of recession. So Keith was right. The rate of recession might have changed, okay? So I don't think it's a proof the Earth is 6,000 years old, but I think it is a proof it can't be billions of years old. Certainly, neither way hurts our, our spot, our, our position, whether it receded at the same rate or receded at a slower rate. doesn't matter. If the Earth is 6,000 years old, it absolutely doesn't matter. So we win both ways. Okay, let's see. Um, what do you think about the flat earth? I think it's real dumb, real dumb. Kansas is flat. Everything else is, is West Texas. Oh, West Texas. Okay, the rest of it's round, right? I've never known a forgetful monkey. That's a good point. I've never known a monkey, so. How would someone in Australia be able to call you? Telephone. Oh, I don't know. I get calls all the time from all over the world, so I don't know. 855 Big Dino, extension three, I'm taking them all the time. Uh, would love for Hubby to be mentored by you or call. You're the only preacher he will listen to. Well, do you have WhatsApp or Skype? I have a, I have a Chevy truck. Is that what they're asking? Yeah, I do. And oh, and a Honda Insight. 20, 21 years old. Yeah, it goes zero to 60 eventually. Uh, you think man went to the moon? I do. I don't, it's not, I'm not going to get involved in fighting that. I've heard all the arguments, pro and con, the flag waving. Here's what I think happened. They really went to the moon. They took a bunch of footage, and they realized, boy, the Americans paid a bunch of money for this, and the footage didn't come out for some reason. And so they restaged it on Earth in, in Hollywood stage. And so that's why the flag was moving. So the picture we saw was probably not from the moon, but I think, yes, they did go to the moon. That's based on my limited understanding. That's my position. Okay. Velociraptor versus a grizzly bear. Whew. Go for it. I'll, I'll watch that if it's free. Okay. All right. Other ones? Last one. The only thing about the Hebrew roots movement, people get carried away with that. Okay. I think they get carried away. They want to go back and be. See, the, the Jews rejected their Messiah. God took off that natural olive branch and grafted in the wild olive branch, Romans 11, the Gentiles. We're supposed to be producing fruit. We're not doing too good. He's going to take us off and put the Jews back in. God is not done with the Jews. But right now, they are not God. They're, they're rebellious against God's, what he wants them to do. Okay, They rejected their Messiah. Uh, I think we should support Israel, what they're doing over there, defending themselves. But they are not a godly people. And... Uh, I've been over there, you know, and uh, so I, I wouldn't fight people in the Hebrews, Hebrew roots movement. I've got enough battles of my own with evolution, but uh, I, I'm not part of it at all. Okay, thank you so much. Pterodactyl over Idaho. Oh, there you go. Send all that to Joseph, tech support at drdiner.com. We'll watch all that. Thank you for joining us. Pray for Gail Ripplinger to get well. Pray for my throat. Something is wrong. They're going to think I was a woman when they find my jawbone and be worn out a lot. So see you tomorrow.